Hey guys, let me just go ahead and delete all this and we'll start over. Sorry about that. Alright, let's go ahead and create a new plane. I'm going to show you how to get everything up and running. Alright, plane. Alright, we'll just drag and drop you down a little bit like that. Create a new object. It could be any object you want now because this is what our physics is going to be calculating now. Alright, I'm just going to use a cube for examples. Okay. First thing we're going to do is, alright, let me shut this off down here so I can show you how to get that. Alright, right now if we hit play, absolutely nothing happens. It's just a box. Like, that's boring. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Window, select Physics Inspector. Now, I purposely made it where it's horizontal like this because it's easier to read. Now, if I have a bunch of complaints, I guess I'll change that. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and just drag and drop this down here. Or you could just drag and like that and just put it on another screen if you want to <clears throat> alright still if we hit play nothing's gonna happen it says no object selected and it's saying with the script attached to it alright so nothing's happening yet so this is all you gotta do just make sure you have this window down here go to project go to physics inspector scripts and just drag and drop the script on it that is it now, as you can see, we got a green box around our object, which means everything's good to go. It's not going too fast, not going too slow. It's just idling. It's good, you know. All right. Now, the version y'all will have will not have speed or side speed. This is just for testing purposes for me, so I can, you know, make sure everything's running good. All right. Now, before I get too in depth with everything, I'm just gonna show y'all. I'm not gonna explain a thousand things at one time. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change speed. We're going to change it to, we'll do 110. Okay. So we're moving at 110 velocity, which is meters per second in velocity. Now, as you can see, it says cube is selected. That's the name of our object, cube. Okay. Now, I want to go ahead and hit play, and this box will turn yellow once it gets past 100 units a second. So it turned yellow, turn red. Oh, I forgot to put drag, that's why. Yeah, let me add a drag to it. Alright, so now it'll just go into yellow. Alright, just wait a second, let it finish trying to calculate the drag and all that. As you can see down here, vertical, yep, vertical axis velocity. I have it set to go 110 units a second. Well, in reality, it's going 107, well, 108 if you round it out. It's not actually moving at 110. <clears throat> okay. Now, I want to change it to 160. This is this is the default setup, so I'll show you how to change that in a minute. 160. All right. Now it's red. What this is telling you right here in the physics system, if an object's going too fast, <coughs> sorry about that. If an object's going too fast, it might accidentally blow through a wall, like if you're using like an actual projectile bullet. If it goes too fast, it's just going to shoot through a wall as if it never hit it. So I have a default to 0, 100, and 150 to change. Okay. Now, whenever it's green like this, you can't change how fast when that turns green. I have it defaulted out between 0 and 50. Or if you change it 0 and whatever yellow debug is, you can change it, let's say, 5 for yellow, and we'll change it to 10 for red, and you'll see exactly what happens. All right, I'll change you to five speed. It's not going to do nothing except stay green. Oh, gravity. Let me turn that off. Sorry about that. All right. If you should go at five units a second, it's not actually going to go five. Okay. It's staying around four, eight, nine, nine, nine. It might go to four, nine, yep, four, eight, nine, 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 eight, eight. All right. So we're still within the good range. All right, we'll change it to six. Oh, maybe that didn't want to change. All right, we'll go to eight. That's not updating. That's weird. I don't know why it's not updating. Let me try this again. Oh, probably because I changed the wrong thing. Oops. Yeah, that's right. My bad. I changed the wrong thing. I wasn't paying attention. That's my fault. All right. Change you to six. There. Now it's yellow. 
Alright. Now we'll let it calculate the rest of it because it's not actually going to go 6. <clears throat> Alright. So we're actually going 5.879 units a second. Alright. Now let's go 11 just to go past red. Alright. Now we're going too fat. We're going faster than what we want our objects to go. It's just there for warning purposes. But hey, if I'm running down this hallway and I hit the surface and it starts making me go faster, well, if I set up my red debug to be a specific number, then it will at least let you know that you're going faster than what your objects want to go. Okay? It's there just to help visualize how fast your object's going. Like right now, I mean, that's how fast it's going. Not fast, but some people may not want to go faster than five units a second. So I have it set up to where you can at least visualize roughly how fast your object is going. Okay. All right. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and we'll add some more mass. We'll add like 45 mass, which I know you don't really want to go that high unless you have to. But let me change my speed down. Put y'all back at zero. Now, yeah, one thing, yellow debug and red debug. If you change, let's say red, and I hit play. It says and turn the box gray. It doesn't know what's going on. So what you have to do is you have to change yellow with it. Or if you change this yellow, the same problem's gonna happen. The box is gonna turn gray. Oh, well, I didn't. Okay. Well, let me see something. If you go faster and forward, it should have a problem then. Oh, too much mass. Yep, yeah, turns gray. Okay, so just make sure if you change one, change the other. If not, just leave them at zero, and it'll be defaulted out at zero, 100, and 150. Okay. All right. Now, let's start paying attention to these down here now. All right, vertical axis velocity. Okay, we'll just get rid of the mass again on the rigid body. And we'll just change that. My speed's fine at six. All right, just watch vertical axis velocity down there, okay? And watch the vertical axis curve. I, I guess I'll cut them both on in a minute. All right, so go ahead and hit play. All right, vertical axis velocity. That's how fast we're actually moving in real time. And this is the um, the curve forward. As you can see, it's slightly moving. And it's done now because the object stopped. Oh, no, it's not done yet. Oh, yeah, it's done now. Okay. But that's how fast we're going inside the graph, as you can see the curve. I there I put these here mainly so if you don't feel like looking at these numbers, like if you hit an object, you'll see the curve go up and down in case it hits something, you know, just to, to visualize. That's why I made this to help visualize things. All right. Now let's change you all of a sudden to two velocity. Slowing down. The curve will change in just a moment. Well, actually, no, it won't because it's not a big dip and change. Okay, I'll change you to negative two. Let's see what happens. Now the bottom is moving. Okay. But same thing with um, side speed. It'll change horizontal axis velocity. Okay. Now if I add gravity back to it, as you can see, gravity we're falling at, well, 9.4, 9.5, 9.6. Yeah, as you can see, gravity is technically is 9.81, but we're not actually falling at 9.81 units a second. We're falling at 9.613804 units a second. Okay, now, last total air time. Okay, the object has been in the air for, well, 98 seconds now, 99 seconds. We haven't touched the ground or any object in 105 seconds now. Okay, so... Now, what I'll do is I'll go back to here, delete speed, and cut gravity on. Okay, I'll just cut you on now. All right, we got an impact force of 5.456184. Okay, that's how much force we impacted the ground with. We are in the air for 0 0.69 seconds, so pretty much 70 seconds. Okay, or not 70 seconds, 0.70 seconds, my bad. All right. Now, however, the impact force, we got two of them right here. We got last impact force and last collision impact. These are two different things. I mean, they work exactly the same way, but one's more detailed, okay? Now, 
let me go ahead and I'll drag this box over here. Okay, and I'll duplicate it. Control C, Control D if you're on PC. All right, and then I will actually just let me rotate it. Actually, actually, no, nah, I can rotate it. Okay. Um. All right. I'll change the speed. We'll do negative 45. Okay. Then we'll change your mass to 60. Let's just say that 60 mass at negative 45 speed. Okay. Then we'll get the mass of this, and we'll change you to 20 mass. And we'll change your speed to, and we'll do 135. Okay. Make sure gravity is off on both of them. Okay. Now, let's watch what happens here. I'll select this box and um, watch last collision impact, last impact force. Okay. Now, the last impact curve just works with the one up top, last impact force. The collision one, I didn't have enough room to put it without taking up too much room over here. So I just left it as last impact curve right here. Okay. All right. Now let me go ahead and hit play. Let's unselect out of that actually. Hit play. Do that. All right. Oh crap. Let me do that again. Sorry about that. I'm about to hit pause. All right. Now here's what's happening here. All right. The object we have selected right now, just this one, had an impact force of 14.18652. Okay. This one had an impact force of 49. Now, you see what's going on here. All right. We got 60 mass on this object. That's why we had such a strong impact force on this one. And this one was only 14 because we have a mass of 20. And we're moving at 135 units a second. However, we didn't make it up that fast yet. We were only going 0 0.972 units a second. So it was building up speed. It just hasn't made it that far yet. Okay. And just because we got 135 units a second, we got mass to calculate with it. So we're actually moving not even one unit a second, technically speaking, three meters. Okay. Now, if you pay attention to this, all right, we got last collision impact, 63.21869. They're both the same, 63.21869. What this is doing is, is calculating both the mass of both objects times the velocity that it is actually currently moving at 0 0.9729781 and 0 0.9729817 okay and it multiplies and calculates okay we had a total collision impact between both objects of 63.21869 like like an impact force you know that's how hard a collision actually was to actually do what we wanted to do if it was a real game, knock a barrel over or, you know, just stuff like that. Okay. Since we are here already, I'm just going to leave it paused. All right. I already went over the curve, I believe. I think I showed y'all. But we're not even moving one unit a second, so it's right under that. Okay. Now, we're almost done, guys. I'm trying not to make this too, too long, but it's trying to explain everything. Let's go down to rigid body information. Okay. I automatically made put it where you can just have the name of the object. It's not nothing to do with the rigid body. I just I figured it's nice to know what object you actually have selected. So I put that there. Okay. Now where it says colliding, we were actually technically can colliding until I moved the object. So it's it's correct, it's because I moved it. Let me I just put you back like that and let you do your thing. Alright. So we're colliding now. See, I'll show you. Let me back it out. All right, we're not colliding now. Now we're colliding. As you see, now we got a collision impact with 95. Our current impact with this object was 23. Okay. Our, now, that's why it's saying current gravity is zero. It's because we have gravity turned off. Current drag is, well, it's one. Angular drag is 0 0.05. And our current object mass is 20. I, I put these in here so you don't have to always have the rigid body open if you want to have things, you know, put away so you don't have to see it. You can see everything that's, you know, stuff you really do need to see right here. Okay. Now, the last part that I don't think I have went over yet is stability check. Okay, let me go ahead and just cut this off. Okay. And let me just go ahead and delete that box and we'll just use this one. Okay. 
as you can see everything right here is just empty there ain't nothing going on cut that on now everything is stable okay now let me go ahead and uh, I'll come right here okay pay attention to the x-axis where it's a stable right there all right we're slightly unstable now we're we're off balance slightly now we are completely unstable if we were standing on something we'd fall over right now we'd be be pushed over same thing works with both all the all three axes you know we go to this one we're slightly unstable now now we're completely unstable now I also did it with the Y axis in case you have a game where you need to pay attention to the Y axis so I went and added that anyways so slightly unstable now we're unstable it works in both all directions okay so if I go left oh I guess so. oh wait what's, what's going on here now it's not working at all let me pause this real quick no I found out why it's not working this somehow got turned off I guess I don't know how but it got turned off all right slightly unstable unstable slightly or majorly unstable oh yeah I forgot there's majorly unstable I forgot about that one sorry about that guys all right we got slightly unstable unstable majorly unstable which means we are definitely gonna fall because our legs would be at this bottom corner right here sorry about that I, I, I completely forgot about majorly unstable all right but yeah that's that's pretty much everything it's very easy to set up I'll show you how to set it up again because there's a lot of information I just went through okay let's go ahead and delete that delete that close tab okay all right just go to window physics inspector drag and drop or put it where you would like to remember it's horizontal then create whatever object it is you want your to be testing with I'll create a cube just drag and drop physics inspector scripts drag it right onto your object done just remember yellow debug and red debug have to be changed if you change one of them I mean it has to be make sure it's a positive number because it's programmed to understand the negatives already so 45 and then you change this to 100 red debug means you're going way too fast you need to slow down that's that's your custom speeds that you want to be set so you can visualize it okay that's pretty much sums it up if you have any more questions please either email me or try to get a hold of me and I'll see what I can do to help thank you